My name is Ned Gordon. I live in Bristol, New Hampshire. I'm currently employed as a circuit court judge, and I preside over the court in Franklin. I'm very concerned about the use and abuse of alcohol in the state of New Hampshire. I see it every day in my court. I frequently say that alcohol runs through my court like a river. I probably don't have to tell you that there's a connection between the use of alcohol and criminal activity. I'm concerned lately with the number of robberies and thefts I see in my court, all fueled by the need for money or for drugs. There are other cases, though, uh, that you might not think would be alcohol-related. For example, family division cases, where we see children who are delinquent coming from families where alcohol is abused. And you have to see that the use of alcohol, the abuse of alcohol, tends to be intergenerational. Or par parents who get uh, drunk every night, and for whatever reason, the kids just don't get to school the next day and they are truant or in abuse and neglect cases. One of the most frequent abuse and neglect cases that we have these days are parents who give birth to children who are addicted to drugs, cocaine, or heroin. Even in small claims cases, we see people who, because of their substance abuse, are unable to keep their jobs, to maintain employment, to maintain a safe and secure place to live, frankly just can't pay their bills. Often, those bills are child support. Yes, we see alcohol, the use of alcohol, all the time. And people need to be accountable for their own conduct. But the state has to be accountable, too, for its conduct with regard to alcohol. This state aggressively markets and profits from the sale of alcohol. This is different than other priorities that the state might have. We have a duty to provide services to our citizens. But in this particular case, the state's complicit. In the year 1999, the New Hampshire legislature was faced with a bill, Senate Bill 153. That bill was designed to set aside 5% of the Liquor Commission profits to be used for alcohol abuse treatment and prevention. It took two years for that bill to wind through the legislature, but when it did, the legislature adopted a policy in the year 2000. That policy was that we would take responsibility for our conduct, that we would set aside 5% of those revenues, and we would use them for addressing the problems that, in fact, the state has some responsibility for creating. Unfortunately, we've never properly funded that alcohol fund which we created. I might note at the time that the fund was created, there were a number of legislators who said, you know, it's, it's the right idea, it's the right thing to do, but we just can't afford it right now. But there was, a there was a groundswell of support, in large part led by New Futures, a groundswell of public support with people getting out to the legislators and saying that this needed to happen. And as a result of that, it passed. And then after it passed, the governor vetoed the bill. And she said, yes, this is the right thing to do, but it's just not the right time. We just can't afford it right now. But the legislature, again, as a result of the public support, overrode the veto, and we created that public policy. And we began to fund that alcohol fund. But just a few years down the road, the legislature said, you know, we can't afford to keep funding that fund at 5%. And so they depleted the fund. And that fund has been depleted over the course of the years. And every two years, the legislature meets and it says, you know, it's the right thing to do, it's the right idea, but we just can't fund it. We can't afford it right now. The fact is that there'll never be a good time to fund it. We need to take responsibility for what we, we do. We need to fund that fund. When the fund was originally created, it was created over time uh, with the idea uh, that increase in profits from the Liquor Commission would be used to fill the fund. And we could do that again today. At one point in time, we had over $5 million going into the fund. At this point in time, we only have $1.5 million per year. While Liquor Commission profits have more than doubled in the last 10 years, the amount of money which the state has set aside to address the problems with alcohol has been reduced by more than half. I have to say that the funds that are used are used productively. Again, people will say, 
well, geez, you know, we use those funds for treatment and people still end up drinking. You know, it's an endless process. It's not going to work. But the fact is that there are many people in the state who are helped and have been helped by the use of those funds that have cleaned up their lives and become productive citizens. And it's been well worth it for this state to have invested in that particular purpose. I hope and encourage the legislature to fund the fund, to take responsibility for its own conduct in marketing alcohol in this state. We have one of the highest per capita consumption rates in the country. That's not a coincidence that we also are one of the most aggressively marketing states with regard to alcohol. We need to take responsibility for our conduct, and I hope we do that now. Thank you.